Today we're going to learn about references to earthquakes and total eclipses of the, of the sun from Sefer Amos, from Yeshayo, who was a contemporary of Amos, and from other Nevi'im. And we're going to show how actually modern science, modern archaeology, even astronomy, has conclusively proven um, that the references in Amos and Yeshayo are correct, precisely as stated. So we know from the beginning of Amos, and I'm going to run through the Pesukim quickly because I assume that you learned them carefully in class, that the very beginning of Amos starts with a reference to an earthquake. Not just an earthquake, but the earthquake. Dibre Amos, Asher Ayaba Noktim Mitkoa, Asher Chaza Al Yisrael. Amos was a Chose, a Navi, a prophet on Israel. Bime Yuzio, Melech Yuda, Bime Yeravam Ben Yoash, Melech Yisrael, in the time of Uziah. In the time of Yeravam, not Yeravam that we remember from Melachim Aleph, but Yeravam the second of Israel, Shinatayim Lifnei Haraash, two years before the earthquake. And obviously, if it was the earthquake, it must have been a very big one if it was called the earthquake. And Rashi already says that this earthquake was a reference to. The earthquake just happened. That was when Uziyo got leprosy. As Yeshayo in Perak Vav in chapter 6 gave a nivuah. And as also a reference from Zechariah as well. From Yeshayo, Vayanu, Amot Atzifim, Uziyo got leprosy because he went into the Beit HaMikdash. He was the king. He wanted to also be the Kohen Gadol. And so he went to bring the Ketoret. And at the moment he did the sacrilege of bringing the Ketoret in the Beit HaMikdash, the house shook. Vayanu, Amot Atzifim. The pillars shaked and quaked. And this created a world actually not worldwide, but an Israel-wide catastrophe, a terrible earthquake that was so bad that some 500 plus years later, Zechariah, who is a much later prophet, references this when he talks about the end of days. He said there'll be an earthquake, Kasher Nastam Ra'ash, like the earthquake that happened at the time of Uziyo, and we see this in Zechariah, V'natam Ge'arai, Ki'agiyah Ge'arim, the mountains will shake, because of the earthquake at the time of Uziel. In other words, the earthquake was so bad that all you need to, to say 500 years later was the earthquake, and we knew with earthquake it was referring to. It was referring to the one at the time of Amos, at the time of Yeshayo, which happened in both Israel and Yehuda as a result of Uziel, Melech Yehuda, bringing the Ketoret in the Beit Mikdash. And Divrei Yavim tells the story about how Uziel became a Gevalev. He became arrogant and he brought the Ketoret. And when he brought the Ketoret, it says that Uziel um, got Tzarat. At that time, by Yehu Uziyo Mitzra Adyo Moltoni Atzarat until his death. So that was the personal punishment for Uziyo. And so, if you fill in the 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 pieces, Divrei Torah Aniim B'Makom Achad V'Ashirim B'Makom Acher, often the words of Torah pour in one place and rich somewhere else. So you can't get a full picture unless you reference all the verses. Not only did Uziyo get leprosy, as it's stated in Divrei Yamim, but as well there was a horrible earthquake, as it's stated both in Amos and as it's stated. Furthermore, in Yeshayo, and as it's referenced as well in Zechariah. And here are just some more references to it. Um, Yeshayo, Perak Vav, Bishnat Mota Melech Uziyo, when Uziyo died, which Rashi says wasn't that he really died, but he got Tarat, leprosy. And that it says at that moment, in that great vision, which you're going to learn later in the year, of the Malachim in the Beit Mikdash. Karazel Zavamar, Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzavakot, it says, Vayanu Amot Atzifim, Mikola Kare, Vabai Imalayashan, that the house shook, the Beit Mikdash actually shook, and was full of smoke as a result of this earthquake. Amos, as, as well, once you know that there was this horrible earthquake, then you understand lots of Amos. Because Amos over and over again references times that there's going to be some type of shaking. P, like, for example, it says, "Ubakati al mizbechot beit el." I will give. Uh, I will pay back for the altar the beit of nigdu karnot the midbeach and naful laaretz. The horns in the midbeach will be uprooted and fall to the ground. Sounds like 
An earthquake would destroy an altar. I will destroy your summer homes and your winter homes. Your winter homes and your summer homes. And your your homes that are made of ivory. Many houses will be lost. So it sounds like an earthquake. And not only an earthquake, but an earthquake that's so big that it went throughout Israel because both their summer homes were affected and their winter homes, which obviously geographically were in different places. And then in Amos Perak Dalad as well, it says, I will overturn you like Sodom and Gomorrah, etc., etc. Once again, seeming to reference an earthquake. But do we have any evidence, extra biblical evidence, evidence from the world of archaeology or science of this earthquake? And the act, and the answer is actually we have almost incontrovertible evidence. Yigal Yadin, who was a very famous archaeologist, he was the one who also dug up Masada. So he dug up Chatzor, which was a city of that time, and it describes how, and I'll show you in the next chart, how he saw that in one stratum, stratum is an area, they do archaeology by measuring layers because that's how they can date things based on the pottery in those letter, layers. So in stratum 6, which is dated to the first half of the 8th century, that means from the year 800 to 750 BCE, which exactly matches the time of Amos, he found, and this is a drawing because he couldn't show it after he dug it up, he found a tilt. Everything was tilting downwards in stratum 6 in Chatzor. And so this is the reference to the earthquake. That's what would cause everything to tilt. And not only did he find it in Chatzor, but as it mentioned here, he found it in a number of other different places not just in Chatzor, but in other places, you can look them all up if you reference the following link, which I'll open up momentarily. So here is the page on the earthquake in the time of Uziel from Wikipedia, um, but it actually references an article that's from a peer-reviewed review, review, journal, the International Geography Review, which is a peer-reviewed scientific journal, and it mentioned the work of Yigal Yadin and other archaeologists in Israel. And they describe how debris at six sites, Chatzor, which we showed, Der Allah, Gezer, Lachish, Tel Yuda, and Ein Chateva, is tightly confined stratigraphically to the middle of the 8th century with dating errors of 30 years. The earthquake was at least 7.8, but likely 8.2. So you have six different sites in Israel throughout the country that all reference the same earthquake, all with the same type of tilt that you could see clearly there was an earthquake and they date it to exactly the time of our story of Amos of Yeshayo and they say the, just based on estimates the earthquake must have been a very large one at least 7.8 if not 8.2 that's pretty big that's uh, very very large. Um, this severe geologic ge disaster has been linked historically to the speech delivered at Beitel by the shepherd Amos of Tekoa. So here you have evidence from, the, from a peer-reviewed scientific journal um, based on the work of Yigal Yadin and others to the earthquake, which they date at 760 BCE, around approximate. And if we do our Jewish dates, Amos started actually in 768 um, giving his prophecy, so it's almost exactly the time period. So we have an example here where the archaeology almost proves conclusively what is mentioned in our Tanakh. Now, just moving right along, we're going to go to a continued reference, not to an earthquake, but another event that talked about over and over again, both in Amos and Yeshayahu, which is a solar eclipse. So once again... We have an event, and it says, I will bring out the sun. I will make the sun go out in the afternoon. Or the land will become dark in the middle of the day. So it seems to be that suddenly there'll be darkness. Now you could say this is theoretical. This is metaphorical. It doesn't mean literally. But if you see many, many sources to the same idea, then you start to wonder maybe it was true. Look at chapter 4. I make the morning into darkness. So once again, another reference to day, morning, becoming darkness. 
And then in Amos chapter 5, Osa Kimi Uxil, Amos is saying, why do you worship Orion and Pleiad, the constellations? God made these constellations. Vahofek Leboker Tzal Mavet. And he turned the morning into the shadow of death, which is shadow, which is darkness. Vayom Lelayla Hekshich. The day becomes a dark at night. And then later on he says, you're looking for the Yom Hashem, the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. Halo Choshech Yom Hashem Velo, or the day of judgment, the day of darkness and not light. And then once again in Yeshayahu as well, he talks about Chashach Hashemesh B'Seitel V'Yarek Lo Yagia Or, the sun's going to become darkness. And even our reference that we saw from Zechariah says, Vaya B'Yom Ahu Lo Or, it won't be light on that day like the time of Amos. So it seems to be a reference to a solar eclipse. Now, do we have evidence to this? So this is, not, this is something actually we have evidence both in archaeology and astronomy. First of all, a total eclipse of the sun, just to see what it looks like. This is... This was a solar eclipse that happened in Turkey a couple of years ago, a total eclipse of the sun. Total solar eclipses are not very common. They're common in, in the world. They happen once every three or four years. But to be in a specific location when an eclipse happens, maybe happens once every thousand years, a total eclipse. You can have partial eclipses, but a total eclipse where the sun is completely covered by the moon are a very rare event. Nowadays, we can predict them with astronomy. Back then, there was no way for them to predict it. So do we have proof that there was an eclipse, a total eclipse of the sun at the time of the Amos? And the answer is clearly yes. Look over here. For example, we have something called um, from the Assyrian, the Assyrian eponym list, which is like an Assyrian history book. And it talks about a total eclipse of the sun. Bor Sagala of Guzana revolt in the city of Ashur in the month of Simanu, that's the month of Sivan, an eclipse of the sun. And based on the years, we know exactly when this eclipse took place. It was in the month of Sivan, in the month of June, um, on the ninth year of Or Shadan. And based on astronomy, we can get even closer to evidence of this eclipse because all the eclipses of the sun have actually been chronicled um, by NASA, both the eclipses that happened and the eclipses that will happen, and they create actually Google Earth documents. And this is a Google document, sorry, a Google Earth yeah, file for the eclipse of the sun that happened at this time period, at the time of Amos, I think a little bit later, 722 BC, a total eclipse. This is the area of the total eclipse. These are partial, or almost total eclipses. And let's see, and we can actually know exactly when this happens, to the minute. So let's say you were in Shomron. So you click here, and you will be able to see exactly when the eclipse took place. And here we go. If you're in Shomron on the date being 722 BCE on, I think it was June 20, yeah, it was the 15th of June, 762, my mistake, BCE. So the the eclipse started at precisely 6.10 Greenwich Mean Time, which would be 8.10 in the morning in Israel. It was at a tight at 9.27 a.m. and 58 seconds. And then it ended at 8.54, which is really now 10.54. So between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. in Israel, at 7.62 BCE, June 15th, we have the exact moment of the eclipse, which at its height in Israel was 90% eclipse for all intents and purposes to the people it looked like a total eclipse and even more interestingly since Amos is referencing often the predictions about the impending disaster from Ashura where was the total eclipse of the sun a complete eclipse was over Assyria as we saw from the Assyrian eponym list as well so here we have if you ever have a trivia question what is the one event in Tanakh that we have scientific verification of when it took place to the second you can enter the total eclipse of the sun in the time of Amos, which happened on June 15th, 762 BCE, and happened precisely at 9.28 a.m., 23 seconds over Israel. Thank you very much.